Good afternoon, this is Sean Golding with Golding and Golding. Here to jump back into some presentations with a focus on um, high income earners and the wealthy, which is what the IRS has recently indicated they're going to um, go after. They have their sights set on people who are earning more than $400,000 a year and, and have significant wealth. Um, hopefully you made it through tax season, at least the first part of it, right? April due date is gone, but there is also June if you're expats. Um, October if you're on extension, and December if you're on double extension, if you live overseas and you qualify. Let's talk a little bit about what the IRS is going to do. So in prior years, the IRS has sometimes shied away a bit from going after uh, wealthy taxpayers. Why? Because wealthy taxpayers tend to have um, lawyers and CPAs and accountants and a team that will challenge the IRS agents on anything that they're alleging. So the IRS agent says, oh, we think you owe this much money. We think your deductions are improper. You know, for a taxpayer that's not represented, um, the IRS can normally push a little harder. But for taxpayers who have counsel, who have CPAs, um, it's harder for the IRS to, to get their nut, essentially, right? Because the squeeze may not be worth the juice. The taxpayers are able to fight back challenge the IRS in all the different positions, you know, do the collection due process hearings, go to tax court, file in, in district court or the court of federal claims if necessary. So um, there has been that sort of issue, although recently the IRS has made it known that um, they're going to be going after the wealthy taxpayers, high income again, over 400000 um, It's sort of like a two-pronged scenario the way the IRS is doing it. On the one hand, they're trying to warn, <coughs> excuse me, they're trying to warn taxpayers about issues, um, tax schemes and scams, such as art donations, charitable trusts, things like that. But on the other hand, they're also letting them know that they're going to be coming after them for audits. And so what can taxpayers do to prepare themselves? What can they do to try to avoid the heavy hand of the IRS? So let's talk about some of the, the scams and schemes to avoid. First one is the Malta pension plan, right? This one has been in the news for the past few years. IRS uh, attempted to close this loophole with the CAA back in 2021 or 2022. Essentially, it's not a pension plan the way you think of like your 401k. They're retirement schemes, sort of like a personal pension, a personal retirement. And what happens is a lot of these taxpayers are kind of, uh, they're being conjoled into going and investing in these multi-retirement schemes where they put in a bunch of post-tax dollars then they're not paying any tax on the growth. They're putting in appreciated assets and not paying capital gains tax. When they're taking distributions out, they're taking it out at a staggered sort of rate based on their age, again, to avoid tax. And the IRS said no. Um, there were some criminal and civil enforcement protocols by the IRS and Department of Justice, although it has waned a bit and it does seem like it's falling more into a civil violation. But even though it may be civil and not criminal, realize that there's willful FBAR violations and FATCA, um, PFIC concerns, tax implications. It could result in a significant high penalty, so something for taxpayers to be aware of. In addition, uh, there was a recent publication where the IRS is telling taxpayers to avoid certain scams, such as art don well, schemes, we should call it, art donations and charitable trusts, things like that syndicated conservation easement. Taxpayers always have to be careful about that. Um, taxpayers should be careful, the wealthy taxpayers especially, about reportable and listed transactions. How is the IRS going to go after it? Well, they will audit and examine taxpayers who are wealthy when they're not ready for it, right? And they will go after them for things that they know that they can win a lot of money, right? So, for example, uh, FBAR. Right. If the IRS goes after wealthy taxpayers who they believe have um, intentional reckless disregard, willful blindness, um, FBAR violations, this could lead to significant fines and penalties. Imagine the situation in which a taxpayer has a multi pension plan or a retirement scheme and they got a few million dollars overseas. You know, they got some bad advice and they weren't reporting the tax. They got other bad advice and they're not reporting the um, they're not reporting the value of the accounts. The IRS thinks it's reckless or willful blindness, and the next thing you know, it's a 50% penalty. You know, with the Bittner case and non-willfulness, that's limited to 10000 per year just for inflation, but that's non-willful. Willful can still be 50% penalty, typically up to 100% value over multiple years. It used to be 
uh, for six years, 50% a year, 300, but it's been reduced to 100%, which still means they can get you for everything as well as other fraud penalties and things like that. Um, there was a recent crypto case in which uh, the IRS, uh, not the IRS, the Department of Justice um, is uh, indicted a taxpayer for not reporting cryptocurrency sales, gains, and income. It wasn't anything shysty. It was just the IRS and Department of Justice learned that the taxpayer was not paying tax on the income that they received from cryptocurrency. Now, typically, that's not going to be a criminal scenario, but depending on what the value is and the type of transactions, if the IRS thinks the person was trying to hide the transactions or you know, we're pretty sure they were supposed to report them, but didn't, um, that can lead to some significant issues as well. So in other words, the IRS is going to try to find items that are high dollar items that will result in high penalties and continue going after wealthy taxpayers, things like 5471, um, things like 3520, foreign trust, uh, some proposed regulations came out, but the IRS still has the right to go after penalties for those types of non-compliance. So for taxpayers who are out of compliance, they want to consider the different amnesty options. If someone is willful, then typically their only option is the voluntary disclosure program. It's still a good option compared to um, being criminally indicted. Because for the most part with VDP, if you're willful, the IRS, and, and you're, you go through the program and you're forthright and you do everything you're supposed to, they typically do not recommend prosecution. I've never had a case here where someone went through VDP and, um, and they were prosecuted or even investigated after the fact. Uh, at least to those issues, right? If, if you weren't up front with the IRS, or you do something else down the line, well, obviously it doesn't protect you forever, but at least to whatever you, you disclosed. For taxpayers who are non-wolfful, there's various other options available. There are the delinquency procedures, streamlined procedures, and reasonable cause. We got a ton of free information available on our main website and our sub-websites. You can always reach out and schedule a reduced fee initial consultation if it's appropriate to your matter. It's something that we handle here. Again, my name is Sean Golding with Golding and Golding. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.